Welcome to Lesson 12, Multiple Simultaneous Food Objects. Wouldn't it be more fun if, when you had lots of snakes going, we had more food, more than one at a time? Let's see how we might do that. How do we keep track of the food? Well, here is a variable that stores the location of the single food item. So I think this needs to become an array. Also, we have to consider whether we, whether this is a big enough change that we should make a class for food. I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe not. Um, okay, so let's see where food is used in the code here. Okay, so here, when we call each snake and tell it to, each uh, self-driving snake, and we tell it to set its direction, we tell it the food, where the food is. So I think that's going to be a change so that we tell it an array of food, and then um, it'll pick the closest one. So maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, let's keep looking. Here when we move, the move method needs to know where the food is, I think, so that it can tell whether it's encountered it. Next. Okay, and I think I planned ahead before, and I have a callback here so that if move encounters food, it tells you which food item it encountered. Okay, so the new food position, that's going to change. Let's keep going. Where else is food used? Here in setup state is where we set the one position of the one food. Any more? Drawing the food is here. So this is going to change. So we draw all the food items. Okay, and... The food is a P5 vector now, so we're going to change it to an array of P5 vectors. Any more? Draw reference structures, food item width. Well, you remember that on the side of the arena, you see these projections. So that's, there's going to be now one set of projections for each of the food items. Next. Okay, so that's it. Um, let's go back to the first place. And I don't have a way to set up a type for an array of P5 vectors. So let's just go on. And maybe we'll do these in order. Okay, so food, I think we're going to rename it. And we're going to call it I'd like to call it foods, but that doesn't sound like good English. So maybe food objects or food pieces or treats or snacks. I think maybe we'll go with food objects. Why don't we just do a big rename and call this food, food objects, food items. Okay, so there's that change. Go back to here. Oh, I, I capitalized the T. Okay, so now let's go and write. Auto set direction now is going to take not a single food item P5 vector, but it's going to take an array of those. So let's go in here now. We're going to go into the snake's auto set direction method. Here we go. Okay, so food is going to be an array of p5 vectors but i don't i don't know um how to write that can i say um this is a guess p5 vector array no all right we'll forget about typing it but we will rename it food items Okay, now this auto set direction, it's trying to choose which way to go to get to 
the food. And we want to, I think first we'll find the nearest food and then everything else will be the same. So this, I think, is going to be nearest food item, which I'll call that. And then we need to create this. So const nearest food equals, and then um, I don't know if we can do this quickly here or if we need to write a function for it, to find the nearest one. Okay, um, without doing a whole bunch of computation, because to find the nearest one using the distance formula involves a square root. Um, well, we won't try to optimize prematurely. I think we'll just do that. All right, I think I'll make a function to find the nearest food. So find nearest food given the food items. Let's create a method, find nearest food. All right, I think we need to do um, a reduce for this. Um, one way would be to just set up a loop, but um, I'm going to have a go at doing a reduce. Here's reduce. Accumulator current value. Okay, so this dot segment sub zero. And that is a P5 vector, and we want the distance between that. I might have to look up some P5 stuff here. Distance between that and the current, this segment sub zero, distance to the accumulator. And if it is less, we're going to return, otherwise we're going to return the accumulator. I think I'll do, um, I'll pull this out. This is the head of the snake. Let's work on move now, so it takes the food items. Here's move, this becomes food items. And we now need to, this is where we're looking to see if we've encountered the food. So here we'll have to do this for each of the food items. So let's see if we can do something like, um, and then we'll have, Oh, we need to know if we found one. Indent this. Okay. And this becomes F. This becomes F. This is the end of that. Found equals true. And then here, if if not found. So if we didn't if we didn't encounter food, then we're going to discard the last. The, the snake doesn't grow if we didn't find food. All right, we have a we have a little flag to see if we found any food. We set it to false. We consider all the food items f. If the new head position is at the food, then we say we found it, and we call we call the callback with that given food and continue for the other food items. We don't really need to, but that's all right. And then after that, we see if we found some food and if we didn't, then we pop off the last segment of the snake. All right, I think we've got that. Let's go back to where we called that from. Okay, now when we get the found food, we have to remove that one from the array from the food items array. So how are we going to do that? Some kind of uh, filter thing? 
find in a filter. All right, we want to filter and we want to keep the ones that are not the found foods. So we will do something like this. So food items becomes, oh, and then the whole business of finding the new food. I think that's going to have to happen asynchronously anyway. So we're not going to do that here. Food items equals food items dot filter food item and include those where um, okay so these food items are p5 vectors so where it's not the case that this particular food item equals the found food all right good I wonder where we are now uh, okay, do I still have my usages of parameter food items not found? I want to see what more there is to do with these food items. Okay, we did that. We did this. Aha, okay, set up state. New food position will give you one. So how about when we set up the state, we have one, one food position. So it's an array now. Okay, now drawing it, draw food. We're going to have to have a loop here for all the food items. Okay, so these don't need to be in a loop, but this does. Um, and this used to be just food. So I think I'm going to do, to change these back to food. And then the loop will do this. Food items for each food. Okay, I think that'll do that. We used to do this once for a single food item. Now we'll do it for each food item. All right. I think we, I think we've handled everything except um, creating a new food item at um, sort of random times. Why don't we take a bold step and try to run what we have here? Wow, I'm really surprised that it works, or seems to. Let me just do a hard reload here. Let's look in the console. Any th messages there? No. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Well, we'll see if any of the food stuff works. The food, there's our single food item, it's there. Um, just as an interesting experiment, why don't we go here and um, where was that setup? Setup state. Yeah, so instead of just starting off with a single food position, let's have two. Then we'll kind of know, we'll have a better sense of whether that's working. Okay, I don't think it is because I don't see two, I don't see two food items here. Okay, so it's time for some debugging here. Um, we got an array of two things. These should be random, so they should be in different places. Um, Okay, maybe we'll come back to that. Let's see if we can eat the food. Okay, so let's click here so the keystrokes go here, and I just need to go down and then to the left. Down, left. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I think maybe I'm not running the latest code. So let's just make sure um, 
that we've been editing the right thing. This is lesson 12 sketch. This is lesson 12 index. This is lesson 12 snake. Here's the index. I'm going to do run that. Come back to here. Close the other window. Shift reload. Look in the console. Okay, well, that's a little bit um, baffling. Let's see if we can get to this food here. Down and there. Yeah, that shouldn't be happening. It's, it's like uh, we're not even running the right code. I don't know why that would be. Um, let's let's um, debug some things here. Debugger. Where should we look? Let's look at that. Um, what was it again? Setup state. Line 143. Okay, that's there. I'll just put a breakpoint here. We'll reload. Pause on breakpoint, but where? There you are, okay. So I'm going to do um, go up to where that was called from. And now if we look at food items, there should be two elements in it. Okay, now where is that going to be? Snake. Food items, yeah, it's got two things in it. One here, let's see if maybe they're both in the same place. And the other one is definitely elsewhere. All right, well, what could the problem be? Maybe we're not drawing both of them. Let's go to where we draw the food. And where was that? Draw food, 178. Make sure we've got this going on here. I'm just studying this a little bit now. Food items for each food. Okay, 178. 178, draw food. Breakpoint here. And then we'll continue debugging and turn off that breakpoint, continue debugging. Time to draw the food now. So food is minus 6400. Zero, zero. And let's step through. Stroke, fill. Draw reference structures. There's the reference structures. Continuing, we should now be for the second food object, which is 032128. All right, and we're calling at to draw it. Let's go into that. Um, hmm. Don't think I meant to get into there. Here we go. So push, translate to the point, and point is 032.128, so that's where it should be translating to. Let's advance, push, translate, Call the function, let's go into it, and the function is supposed to do a p dot box item width. So let's do that. And this is where I would expect the food to come to appear, but it's not. Okay, let's come back to that. I, I don't know what's going on, but why don't we look at the place where we, um, in the snake, we see if we've found the food. Where was that? Was that in move? Yeah, line 58 in the snake. Snake.ts, line 58. 
All right. We'll go and move and then... Um... Oh, wait, not here. Here. Let's do... Let's just put the breakpoint here and then it'll stop at the breakpoint when we eat the food. The one we can see anyway. Okay, continue. And we'll turn that off. All right, here we go. We're going down one and then that way, down, that way. Oh, how interesting. We found it. We found a food item, like an invisible one. Very interesting. We have found a food item. Why didn't it draw though? What a strange thing. Uh, you know, I wonder if this has to do with the texturing. Um, like maybe there's an invisible cube there, but but it doesn't have the apple texture on it, and that's why we can't see it. That would explain some things. Okay, let's go back to the code. Uh, the snake, drawing. Uh, sorry, the sketch, drawing the food. Here. All right, so we got p dot texture food image. Why don't we just put that down a little lower? And I can't see why that would be a factor, but let's just move these these two guys down into here, right before where we do the drawing. Very strange. All right. Um, Take off that breakpoint and reload the page. Oh, I got to make sure the the um, JavaScript gets generated. That happens happening automatically um, when I jump away. Okay, reload. Hey, there's two foods now. Wow, isn't that something? That is a really strange error. So other than that. Um, it looks like our code was pretty good. Uh, I say our. I'll take credit. My code. I did a good job. Yay. Um, all right. So down and... Oh, here. Click here. Down and out. Good. Now let's go get the other one. And down. Yay. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. I think the only part left is randomly adding new food or adding new food at random times, and the frequency should be related to how many snakes there are, don't you think? If there's just one snake, we don't want to add them faster than, a, than the best snake driver could consume them. Okay, where is that going to go? Um, food items. Why don't we go back up to the top? Food items. Something like this. Let me change this back now so we only have a single food item. And then when we add a new food item, it's going to be just something like this. Um, like one line of code. The most complicated part will be figuring out how frequently to do it. So it's going to be something like this. I'll just copy that, and then let's go to draw, because that's kind of where things are driven. And the moving, there's moving, the snakes, and then there's the drawing stuff. So I think creating the new food will happen in here. Now, we've got, we've got things that happen at certain times, like um, next move time. I wonder if we want to have a next food create time and do it that way. 
Um, what are the other options? Yeah, let's do that. Let's have a next food create time. So let's go up here, next move time. And these are numbers. I think I could add some of these, these types. And then this is going to be next food create or creation. Next food creation time. And then let's just, I want to remember how I use this. Okay, milliseconds past next move time. And then that gets set here. All right, let's do this logic down here. How is it going to get set initially? Because um, p.millis is not available until the setup function is called. So maybe. Maybe in setup state, we'll set that. Um, next, food creation time equals, oh, you know what? Let's do this. Equals now, essentially, p.millis. And then we'll move this. Um, and this needs to be. Let's make this an empty array here. So let's say I'm going to copy that and remove this. So it starts out empty, and we indicate that we want to immediately create food. So then we'll go back to draw. And we'll say if now greater than next food creation time, then that code we copied, only thing is we'll do food items dot append. Append, push, what language is this? Push. All right. Well, let's see if let's see how badly we've broken it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I find that very funny. Um, right. So what I missed was if you make a new one, then you need to set next food creation time to be equal to now plus some number of milliseconds in the future. And this is where we have to take into account how many snakes we have. Now, what's our variable for the number of snakes? How are we going to do this here? We probably need to use a map function or something. But how about if just for the moment we'll add a new one, and so we don't have to wait forever, we'll add a new one every second. Okay. All right, good. Now we can adjust that, and I don't know what's right. Every 10 seconds? Let's see, does this language have that feature? Uh, didn't blow up there that I can see. Okay. Um, put the EVA away. Reload that. And let's just go get this guy over to down, to, and away. Okay, oh, and 10 seconds probably passed, and there's the other one. All right, this is looking good. Up. Come over here. And another one appeared. Okay, and I've lost my concentration there and down. Good. All right, let's, um, let's see what this looks like with loads of snakes and adding the food really fast. This is, I've been really wanted to see this for a long time. So we'll add one. 
we'll add one every second. And we'll max out the size. We'll max out the snakes. Max out the speed. It's adding one a second. I wonder if that's enough. Well, here we go. Aha! <laughs> we have a defect. Let's see what it is. Type error, V1 is undefined. Wow, and there's no clue about where that got called from, is there? Um, where's the stack trace for this? Oh, this is it. Okay, so R line 80 in snake. That's where we had a problem. R line 80. Um, nearest food. We're trying to subtract. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think it's time to test out and fix this find nearest food. Um, we would have been lucky to get that reduced to work the first time without looking some things up. Um, why don't we have another quick look at it? Reduce. We have an accumulator. Aren't there a couple forms of this? Let's go back and, and see that. Um, here, reduce, reduce, accumulator, current value, initial value, that's the optional thing. All right, so the plan is that we, that reduce gives us, should give us the first two food items. Oh, I wonder if this fails, if there's only one. We might have to account for that. Anyway, we should have the first two food items. We find the distance between the head of the snake and, the, and one of them, and we see if that's less than the distance to the other one. And if it is, we keep this current one, otherwise we keep the accumulated one. Yeah, that seems decent. I guess we could throw in some debugging stuff. That might be quicker than uh, you know, some doing some console logging might be a little quicker. Um, so how about we just, um, so since I have it in this form, I have to return. So let's pull out this and we'll call this distance one. And we'll pull this out, we'll call it distance two. And then we'll just do, um, we can do P5's print. We'll just print both of those distances and just see kind of what we're getting here. I don't think we can avoid that error. All right, got the console visible there. And set it in motion. That's interesting. Oh, that's not the P5 print. Oops, and we're getting a lot of them. P5 print, this dot P dot print. Try again. Yes, prevent that. Reload, please. And go. Show me the console. All right, we're getting some numbers out. So these, these look reasonable. Um, then we have this strange thing. NS, error not available. Find nearest food. Snake 110. Oh, that's from here. Oh, error not available. I wonder what that means. Maybe I should do console log print just to rule out some complication from P5 print. Uh, console log. Okay, V1 is undefined. This is where we were. 
before. Um, and where are the messages? Console log. Line 80. I guess we could, oh, hang on. Um, right, I need to return the result from this. After we do the reduce, we're gonna end up with one P5 vector for the nearest food. All right, so let's see where we are now. Oh, they ran for a while and then stopped. Where are we now? Reduce of empty array. Ah, okay. So you can't call reduce on an empty, empty array. So we've got to have... Oh, well, what are those snakes going to do if there's no food? Ooh, boy. Because they've got to keep moving, got to keep playing the game. We've got to prevent that from happening. Uh, I think we have to make sure there's always a food. Yes. All right, we gotta make sure there's always a food. How are we gonna do that? Let's go to the place where we might delete the last food. That's in the sketch. Um, where is that? Or is it in snake move? Snake move. There. Uh, the filter business, where did that go? Oh, is it in the eat callback? It's in the eat callback. So let's go to where this is called, which is here. Okay, yeah, this is where we did it. All right, so this now needs to be a, have multiple lines. Okay, so in the case that the food items becomes empty, we need to add one. Um, immediately. How are we going to do that without duplicating code? Um, I guess we'll just have to do this. If food items length equals zero, then um, food items dot push What's that function called that makes the food? Um, new food at something. New food position. All right, I don't like that because now there are two places in here where I'm adding food. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark that to come back to it. A to do. All right, here we go, reload, there they are, and get it going. That's fun. Okay, now um, we'll make the food appear faster. Uh, where was that? That's in sketch, in draw, down here, right. Um, oh, I know what we could do. We could just do, um, yeah, maybe we don't need this next time thing. Let's just make sure that there's at least I don't know, one food item for each snake or half of that or something. How about we forget about this next food creation time and we'll just ensure that we have a sufficient quantity of food every time in draw. All right, so this I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'm gonna go up here and delete this, come back to here, delete these. Um, and I guess we could do it in the same, section, same place here. 
But what we wanted to say is, if um, food items length is, say, less than the number of snakes divided by two, maybe. Now, how do we know how many snakes we have? Where is that? Num snakes. Okay, so food items length less than num snakes over two. So let's see, how will that be if you only have one snake? Um, you have zero food, it'll be less than one half. Yeah, okay, so then I'll paste what I put in the clipboard. Okay, this might do it. Might be a simpler approach. Yeah, I like this better than trying to mess with timing. Oh, look at that, it immediately fills it up with one food item for every two snakes. That's cool. Except that there are, yeah, I guess there are 11 snakes. And so you got six. All right, go and do your thing. Yeah, all right, so let's enjoy this on a bigger scale here. There, and here we go. Who will win? Wow, this is great. I love this feature. Took a bit of work. It was not trivial. Look at that. That space is filling. Some snakes are going to crash and die. We had a single element, a single variable for the, for the single food location, and now we have an array of those. And we had to modify a bunch of places that were expecting a single food item. Yeah, it slowed down there for a second so that they would then deal with multiple food items. And each snake now, before it makes every direction change, or at every move really, finds the closest food item to it, and then goes that way. And then when we draw the food items, we have that loop. Then we had that interesting problem where the food was invisible because for some reason that business with the texture needed to be nearer Oh, it looks like there's one snake left. And I imagine this could go on for quite some time. So I may stop here. All right, well, that was very interesting. That was a good experience. I hope you enjoyed that and you get to see a little bit of what it's like uh, for a professional developer to be human and make mistakes and eventually get something right. See you next time.